Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the six books that I read in January. The first book that I read is called The Sound of Music Story by Tom Santo Pietro. It is basically the story behind how the movie came about and kind of the inside information about how they chose the actors and everyone involved and then the filming of the movie and then also what happened to everybody afterwards. I did enjoy this because my favorite movie probably of all time is The Sound of Music so that's why I chose to read the book. I found it really interesting to have a peek into the background of how a movie comes to be and all of the people involved. They're, it's so complicated, there's so many key players and I think everyone is as important as each other. You have your director, you have your producer, you have your set designer, your costume designer, the actors, everybody involved. It takes so many people to make a movie and so many steps before they even begin filming a movie and I just thought it was really interesting to kind of get an insight into all of that. I thought the book was well researched and well written but I did feel it kind of dragged at times and because about a third of the book is before the movie and about a third of the book is about during the movie filming and production and releasing to the public and then the last third is about kind of what happened to everybody afterwards which I didn't really care too much about. I did feel like it went on quite a bit. It also talked a lot about the original Von Trapp family that the story was based on, like loosely based on, and I wasn't overly interested in that. And so it did feel like a relief to finally finish it, although it, it, was, it wasn't a bad book, it was a good book, but I'll give it one star out of three. And just a reminder that my three star rating is Three stars like this is amazing you have to read this two stars is like this is pretty good i enjoyed it one star is obviously i read it so i must have enjoyed it on some level but it wasn't anything amazing so there you go the second book i read is called the forgetting time by sharon guskin the blurb reads noah is a little boy who knows things he shouldn't and remembers things he should have forgotten because as well as being a four-year-old called noah he remembers being a nine-year-old called tommy he remembers his house, his family, his mother, and now he wants to go home. Two boys, two mothers, one unforgettable story. I thought this book was captivating and compelling. You wanted to find out what happened next. Uh, Grant started reading it and he didn't find it as compelling. I ended up just telling him what happened and he called it a day, moved on to a different book. But I did enjoy it. I felt like the characters were well portrayed and the scenes were well drawn. I enjoyed the story and how it played out. Like there was just enough mystery to keep you going. And there were kind of interesting things going on in the characters' lives. So I did enjoy it and I would recommend it. I gave it a three out of three. Um, Grant's response to it makes me want to downgrade that to a two out of three. But either way, I think it's a good book and I would recommend it. The next book is called Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. Blurb reads, everyone thinks they know Libby Strout, the girl once dubbed America's fattest teen, but no one's taken the time to look past her weight to get to know who she really is. Following her mom's death, she's been picking up the pieces in the privacy of her home, dealing with her heartbroken father and her own grief. Now Libby's ready for high school, for new friends, for love, and for every possibility life has to offer. I should mention this is a young adult or teen book. Everyone thinks they know Jack Maslin too. Yes, he's got swagger, but he's also mastered the impossible art of giving people what they want, of fitting in. What no one knows is that Jack has a newly acquired secret. He can't recognize faces. Even his own brothers are strangers to him. So he tells himself to play it cool. Be charming, be hilarious. Don't get too close to anyone until he meets Libby. When the two get tangled up in a cruel high school game which lands them in group counseling and community service, Libby and Jack are both pissed and then surprised because the more time they spend together, the less alone they feel because sometimes when you meet someone, it changes the world, theirs and yours. Jennifer Niven delivers another poignant, exhilarating love story about finding that person who sees you for who you are and seeing them right back. I loved this book. I absolutely loved this book. I recommend it to Jess and she read it and she also enjoyed it, but she didn't rave about it as much as I did. I just thought it was so beautifully written. I loved the characters. I loved the insight into their experiences. I felt it was very true to life. And you just felt like you were rooting for them all the way through. I really enjoyed the characters. It was uplifting. It was heartwarming, but in the best way, not in like a cheesy way. 
and I will make this my book of the month and highly recommend it and give it a three out of three. You have to read this book. The next book I read is A Heart for Home by Lorraine Snelling. I gave this a two out of three only because it's not that I didn't enjoy it. I loved it. I love all of her books. I gave it a two out of three because it will mean nothing to you unless you have read the whole series right from the beginning, which starts with An Untamed Land. I'd highly recommend the whole series. I think they are wonderful books and I'm still kind of reading through. I read through the series and then this is like a spin-off series and I love it, but I won't go into it because unless you've kind of read the series from the beginning, it won't mean anything to you. The next book is also by Jennifer Niven. I went and got this book out of the library because I enjoyed holding up the universe so much. This one is called All the Bright Places. The Blurb reads, an exhilarating and heart-wrenching love story about a girl who learns to live from a boy who intends to die. Theodore Finch is fascinated by death. Every day he thinks of ways he might die, but every day he also searches for and manages to find something to keep him here and alive and awake. Violet Markey lives for the future, counting the days until graduation when she can escape her small Indiana town and her aching grief in the wake of her sister's death. When Finch and Violet meet on the ledge of the bell tower at school, six stories above the ground, it's unclear who saves whom. And when the unlikely pair teams up on a class project to discover the natural wonders of their state, they go, as Finch says, where the road takes them. The grand, the small, the bizarre, the beautiful, the ugly, the surprising, just like life. Soon it's only with Violet that Finch can be himself, a bold, funny, live out loud guy who's not such a freak after all. And it's only with Finch that Violet forgets to count away the days and starts living them. But as Violet's world grows, Finch's begins to shrink. This is a heart-wrenching, unflinching story of love shared, life lived, and two teens who find one another while standing on the edge. Again, beautifully written and with deep insight into the characters and their experiences. I didn't enjoy this as much as I enjoyed holding up the universe, but I did enjoy it and I still wanted to keep reading and find out what happened to the characters. I will warn you it's not a brilliant ending if you are looking for like a fairy tale ending you probably won't like this ending but I still enjoyed it and I gave it a two out of three only because I didn't enjoy it as much as holding up the universe the next book I borrowed from Jess and it is called women's wellness wisdom by dr. Libby Weaver it says your guide to creating exceptional health being a woman is a beautiful gift However, at times it can be easy to lose sight of this. We can often feel betrayed by our bodies and feel as though we have no control over our thoughts, leading us feeling like we're gasping for air while trying to meet everyone else's expectations. Does anybody feel like that? It doesn't have to be this way. This book will help you to understand the why behind some of your common frustrations, from the weight you can't shift, to why you feel trapped on the stress express, or why you find it so difficult to say no to some people. I think every woman needs to read this book. If you are a woman, Get this book and read it. It is amazing. It explains the why behind so many things that go on in your body, but in a really easy to read manner. It kind of just takes you through it. Basic information, anyone can understand it. And when you kind of understand the why behind things, it's motivating. Like you want to make changes and you want to be healthier and you want to do better for yourself. I think it's written in a really kind of loving way if that makes sense she's really supportive of women and she obviously really cares about what she does and she's knowledgeable she is a nutritional biochemist so she is qualified to talk about these things and to explain them but i just love the way that it's done that it's easy to understand easy to read and kind of really uplifting and supportive highly recommend it and i'll give it three out of three those are the six books that i enjoyed in january I would love to have you leave a comment down below and tell me if you've read any of these books or if you feel like you might want to read any of these books, leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.